What's going on, Future DDS family? We'd like to take a moment to recognize our sponsors for today's video, DAT Booster. DAT Booster is a DAT prep platform, which we've seen help plenty of students improve their scores and actually gain acceptance into dental school. We've done multiple giveaways in the past for this platform, and it's actually come full circle to the point where Nick has actually used the program to improve his scores, and he's actually applying for dental school right now. So I want to give him a moment to explain a little bit about his his journey, his process using the program, as well as, you know, give us a little bit more feedback about the platform himself. Yeah, of course. So first of all, I absolutely love DAT Booster. You know, I was studying for the DAT for over for over a year. So I've seen a lot of question banks and DAT Booster by far just seemed to be the most up to date. And I'll give you guys an example. When I was taking the biology section on my real DAT, I saw 15 questions word for word from DAT Booster. And I know I wouldn't have been able to get a 30 on the bio section without them. And I ultimately got a 27 academic average. So that's been a huge help in applying to dental schools. I highly recommend them to any pre-dent considering using their program. So another great thing about DAT Booster is the fact that they understand that you all are actual students, right? They know you have a lot to pay for being with applications and the actual DAT exam itself. And so what they do is they give you access to their platform to take one free test just to make sure that you like it and it's a good fit for you. Here at Future DDS, we always preach on preparation and we believe that the DAT Booster program is great prep for your DAT exam. If you all are interested and want some more information, go ahead and click the link in our description below. Now let's get back to the video. Hi everyone, my name is Nelly Manukin. I am originally from Los Angeles, California. I am Armenian and I did my undergrad in Cal State University, Northridge. I majored in biology and I was part of the pre-dental club there, um, which I thought was very, very helpful. Um, I also worked at a dental office while I was attending undergrad, and that went on for five years, I believe. Um, yeah, I started right out of high school. I worked at a dental office, um, and it was great. I did um, everything from front office work to chair side. Um, and I got a lot of experience through that. A fun fact about me is that I love to dance and I actually did 12 years of ballet um, that went on from elementary school, middle school, high school, and um, part of undergrad as well. So what got me interested in dentistry is kind of difficult to explain because I feel like it was always like in the back of my mind um, growing up, I going to the dental office, I always was interested in the tools that the dentist was using and what was going on and how they uh, were able to fix my toothache. And so that was always in the back of my mind as a kid. And then um, going through school, I was really, really interested in the sciences and I um, loved anatomy, physiology, and I loved learning about the human body. And so um, I kind of knew that I wanted to go into the medical field, I wanted to go into healthcare. Um, but whenever I tried to imagine myself doing something like, um, you know, being a physician or being um, an optometrist or being a pharmacist, like none of those fields really uh, stuck to me or really interest me. Um, but with dentistry, I just thought it was the most practical option for me and uh, the most rewarding and the most um, interactive and the most hands on. So I just really, um, you know, went for it and I never turned back. Studying for the DAT was a little tricky. Um, I used a few sources to study. I did the DAT bootcamp, I did DAT destroyer books, and I also did Swartwood prep, which is an in-person class. I don't know if they're in person now due to COVID, but um, yeah, I decided to do an in-person class because I felt like I studied or I learned better um, when I'm in a classroom type setting. So that's why um, I chose to do that and I heard Swartwood was pretty um, good at that. So I chose to go with them. 
Um, I think the most helpful source of studying material would be the DAT Bootcamp um, site. The DAT Bootcamp has the questions pretty spot on as to what types of questions they would ask. And it kind of goes over the full range of the DAT, like every little um, topic, it really covers like in a broad scope. And I think that, um, you know, I think that following the DAT bootcamp schedule really would help almost everybody get to the point where they feel comfortable, comfortable enough, because you can never feel too comfortable, um, but comfortable enough to understand what was what's going to come up in the DAT and how, how you should approach it. And, um, how you should answer such certain questions. Um, I also did DAT Destroyer. I don't want to say that I think that was the best um, source of study material. So the DAT Destroyer books are just a bunch of books um, with questions. Um, I think like bio questions, chemistry questions, and um, almost all questions except PAT, I think. Or I, I didn't see a PAT questionnaire. So I feel like the DAT Destroyer questions were a little too um, intense and they were a little too hard and um, it kind of made me discouraged because I would miss more of the DAT Destroyer questions than the DAT Bootcamp questions. Um, so I was a little confused and scared, but then, um, you know, after going through um, the different tests and talking to a few people, um, they, they did say that the destroyer books are not as accurate as to what you're going to see on the, um, on the DAT. But with that said, the DAT destroyer, um, has that kind of mentality of if you can answer the hard questions, then you can definitely answer the more easier questions that might show up on the DAT. So, um, some people like to challenge themselves. Some people like to stick with what's going to be shown on the DAT. So that's, more of a preference thing. Um, I talk more about my DAT experience and my schedule on my uh, YouTube channel. So if you are still curious about all of that, um, you can go ahead and check that out. Other than that, I feel like those three materials that I used were sufficient enough um, for me to be somewhat ready for the DAT. Um, and I studied for three months using those three sources, mainly the two sources, which was um, the boot camp and the Swartwood class. Um, so yeah, three months I took my summer off and I focused on that fully and I took my DAT and I was done and I applied with that. What I think set me apart from other students that applied was definitely um, my exposure to the dental field because I was working at a dental office since um, getting out of high school and um, I gained a lot of experience and I feel like that showed through in my application because I would um, you know really explain how involved I was with um, you know the office that I worked at and um, I you know used terms and phrases that maybe some some dental students coming in wouldn't have um, understood or known um, or certain procedures that they might not have heard of so um, I feel like that might have set me apart um, from most students. I also feel like another thing that kind of helped with my application was um, my personal statement and my letters of rec. Um, I think that having a good personal statement is really important and being able to convey your thoughts on paper um, or online, I guess, um, is really important. And, um, you know, you might have a great story, but if you're not able to say it in a way that will captivate the admissions team, then you might look out. So I think that it's important to have um, experience um, and also be able to write a personal statement really well. Also, another thing I guess that could possibly have set me apart was that I would attend a lot of pre-dental activity days from different dental schools, especially Herman Ostro. Um, and, you know, I kind of gained some exposure there and I definitely did mention um, these events in my um, application. So that could definitely help you um, get a little boost in terms of other students who may not have gone to any activities or uh, Zoom events or any of those things. So 
my interview day at Herman Ostro School of Dentistry um, was definitely different than the other interviews that I did. Um, they had a two day interview. So the first, well, first of all, I, my interview days were um, online. So I didn't get a traditional interview day uh, or days. So um, my interview day, the first day was the um, mini, what was it called? I think it's called the mini, uh, oh God, I have to look it up now. It's called the MMI. <laughs> it was called the MMI, so the mini multiple interviews. And um, surprisingly that we didn't actually speak to anybody um, during that process. It was more of an application that um, you logged on to and you got like a username and you logged on. And during that time, you have, I, I believe, three minutes to answer a question. And um, after the three minutes is done, um, it automatically submits your response and you go on to the next question. Um, you can definitely not use up the full three minutes, but you um, you cannot go back and edit or change or retake the video. So it was a little nerve wracking because you don't have a second chance. You just, once it starts, it starts and you go and you talk for as long as you think is sufficient. And then um, you just, it just automatically submits. And then the second interview day was a PBL interview. And that was when we had a facilitator there um, who was basically there to guide us and watch us interact in a group setting so they would give us a case um, and they would tell us the steps to um, kind of digest that case and talk about that case um, you know build ideas off of that case and write down some notes from the case and um, they just want to see how you act in a group setting because that's how um, you know some of our classes are in dental school at usc so if you aren't able to communicate with others and come up with ideas with others and you know share your thoughts, um, then maybe USC is not the right fit for you. So they just want to make sure that you're able, uh, you're not dominating the conversation and you're not just sitting there listening the whole time. So um, as long as you have a good balance with that, I think the PBL interview should go really smooth. Coming out of the USC interviews, I felt pretty um, confident, but also a little nervous because, you know, if you stumble here and there, you kind of feel like kick yourself and like, dang, I could do, I could have done it uh, a little better. But um, overall, I felt okay. Um, I was just hoping that it was enough, which it was. And um, it's a little, um, it seems like it, it's much more daunting and scarier um, beforehand than it is going into it and then afterwards. So. As long as um, you know you stay true to who you are and you answer the questions um, authentically, and um, you you know interact well in the PBL interview, then I think that you're golden. I applied to ten schools. I got interviews from four schools and accepted to four schools. Um, I chose Herman Ostro School of Dentistry because of the way that they set up their classes um, and the fact that they're hands-on right from the start you know you're drilling on day one even before day one you're drilling during orientation day so um it's really um straight to the point and i i love that you know um reading books you could read all the books that you want but not but if you're not good with your hands and if you don't develop hand skills early on, it's going to be difficult later on when you're actually in somebody's you know, mouth and you're trying to um, do whatever the procedure it is that you're trying to do. So I really, really, really loved that USC is very hands on. And um, I think that the PBL style is very unique to Herman Ostro School of Dentistry. And I think that it's something that's going to be adapted into dental schools um, in the future. Um, I know that the PBL style of uh, studying a case is something that is going to be helpful for boards because the boards have PBL style um, questions and um, cases. I also loved Herman Ostro's community. I think everyone is so closely knit together and everyone's super helpful and no one's trying to one up another person. Everyone's, you know, trying to help each other uh, grow and get better. And I love that.
The transition from being a pre-dental student to a dental student um, was definitely a shift. Um, I took a gap year, so personally, it was a lot for me because I hadn't been in school for such a long time. But um, it wasn't too overwhelming, at least for me. I feel like um, I I feel like I feel like there's always. I feel like the biggest thing with dental school isn't um, how hard the material is, but how much that we have to do. So um, every week there's like a handful of things that are due by the end of the week. So um, it's really important to stay on top of everything and not slack off because once you get back behind, then it's really, really hard to catch up. Um, so you just have to keep moving. Um, and I think that's what was hard because usually... Um, I feel like in undergrad there was like due dates and then like uh, spaces of time where you're just studying and going through classes but um, with dental school it's like study 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 due date due date due date next week study 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 due date due date due date it's it's just like a constant wave and wave and wave of work so um, and work and studying so um, it's also a, a big jump because you're incorporating hand skills. So it's not just sitting down studying from a book um, or turning in assignments. It's more um, get into lab, start drilling, make it pretty, um, do the right dimensions, um, all with PPE on. <laughs> and yeah, and that's, that's something that you just have to adjust to. And um, after a while, you kind of get into the rhythm of it and it's not as daunting as it was in the beginning. So a typical day in my life, let us see, let me choose a week so I can, I'll just tell you about it. Let's take a normal week, not an exam week. Okay, so my week starts off Monday, we have a PBL session, it goes from 8am to 1130am. After that, I usually, um, you know, start working on what's due on Friday from that class. And um, finish up any other loose ends that I need to finish up and get ready for the next day. Tuesday, um, we either have lab time or rotation time. Either way, we're going into lab and um, everyone's rotation time is different and everyone's lab time is different. Um, mine is in the morning, so my uh, lab time is from 8 to 11.30, no, sorry, 8 to 11.45 and um, my rotation time is only an hour, so it's 8.30 to 9.30. And then after that, I finish up what I ha what I didn't finish up for rotation or for lab. And then I get ready to submit my pictures from lab time that I took or from rotation. So that, that's what I'm doing on Tuesday. Um, continuing to work on what I had to work on uh, for PBL that's due on Friday. Then Wednesday, um, we have a morphology lecture from 8 to 9 in the morning. Um, and then we also have that followed up with a lab um, from 10.30 to 1 p.m. Again, working and studying, um, studying lectures and working on uh, the assignment that's due on Friday. Thursday, um, we have behavioral dentistry, um, which is in two parts. Um, it's from 9 to 12 and then from 1 to 3. And it talks about basically how you're supposed to speak with different patients and how patients think and how you should inter interact and how you should interact with patients. So um, it's very interesting. Um, and then usually after that class, I'm drained and I'm just continuing to work and turn in things um, as I go. And then Friday, we have our second PBL uh, lecture or group session, I guess, uh, our PBL group session uh, from 8.30 to 11.30 and then um, followed by a operative and aesthetics dentistry lecture from 1.30 to 3 p.m. And then after that, um, you know, continue to work on what's due on Sunday from our PBL class and um, just finish up anything else that I didn't finish up for the week. So it's, um, I mean, there's something every day, but I feel like it's less class time um, and more just study and work time. What makes me most excited about going to Herman Ostro School of Dentistry is just the, the fact that we are learning in such a fast pace and we get to go in and do what we've, we've been dying to do, which is just 
start, you know, working as a dental professional. So um, instead of, you know, sitting behind books all the time, I just love the fact that I get to wake up and, you know, make my appointment to go into lab and um, get work done and get better and better. And I love to see my progress over time. Um, so I think that's the most exciting thing about um, going to my dental school um, and dental school in general um, is just that you get to uh, really see your progress and 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 actually work towards what you've been wanting to um, you know become and it's kind of beautiful and sometimes honestly it's like I cannot believe I'm in dental school it's like I'll be I'll be drilling and I'll stop for a second and be like wait I'm actually drilling <laughs> on a fake tooth in dental school it's it's such a I don't know it's just a crazy thing to finally realize and finally um you know see come true so um I think that's the most exciting thing is just being able to um being able to do what you love being able to do what you love my biggest piece of advice to pre-dental students is never quit and just keep going um, everything will fall into place as long as you keep pushing and you keep trying your best in everything um, things will fall into place don't don't get discouraged and um, you know I know it is stressful but you can do it and if you really want something you will get it so um, keep trying keep pushing and if you guys have any questions I will, um, will include my contact information, um, my Instagram, my email, and TikTok, and YouTube, and um, I hope that if you have any questions or concerns or comments, you can always reach out. So my um, Instagram is at Nelly Manukian, and my TikTok is the same, and my YouTube is the same. And my email is nellymanukian at gmail.com. So if you guys have any other questions or um, comments that you'd like to give, uh, you can go ahead and email me um, and I will try to help you out. Um, other than that, thank you so much for having me and thank you for watching. I hope that this helped and I hope that I can see some of you in the future at Herman Ostro School of Dentistry.